Hey everyone, Hard Shadow here, and welcome back to Cabin Fever. Previously, I got the two joke endings of the game. At least that's what the guide I'm following calls them. Which, yeah, if you did see that last video and my reactions to those ending, and ah, my reactions to those endings, you'll real, you'll probably see like why I was here. Like, what did I just experience? Like, total mood breakers or whatever. But anyway. So now, I'm gonna go back and start getting some of the other various endings. And, well... So I've written down whatever the guide had. Although... There is a chance I might have to... Yeah, I might just have to reset the game, so we'll see. Oh no, I don't have to restart very far off at all. Okay. So, yeah, I'm just going to be skipping through a lot of this until we either get some kind of different dialogue or new scenes. Anything we haven't seen here. Alright, well, I guess just considering... Let's say maybe it's okay if she stays. Look how pitiful she is, My said my brain. My brain was right, and I didn't know what to do except go along with it. Well, it's not like I'm going to just send you back out into the rain. Yeah, that would be the worst thing to do. Or one of the worst things to do. Not by yourself, anyway. Is there anyone else in your bubble? Anyone I can call to come get you, or... She looked down into her lap. No. Oh. Her response made me too nervous to ask any further questions. I just wasn't sure I could handle a tragic backstory at that particular moment. Yeah, and you both have some pretty tragic backstories yourselves. In any case, I knew that if my parents were still around, they'd never send this girl back into the night. They'd have let her stay, at least until she got her bearings. I sighed, giving in. Okay, well, you can sleep on my couch tonight. We'll figure the rest out tomorrow. Alright, can I skip? Okay, well, I guess... Yeah, I might as well just keep going for all the options I haven't seen. Let's say, let it go. She's had a rough night. I decided not to push it. It was all too much, and I really needed sleep. My toe was hurting where I'd stubbed it on the broom. Don't worry about it. You're here now, so just take the opportunity to get some rest. I skirted, or I skirted around to grab some blankets. I maintained a wide berth as I dropped them on the couch. I offered her a glass of water, pointed out the bathroom, asked if she needed anything, all from afar. This is perfect. Thank you so, so much for everything. Truly, I'm lucky to have met you. Yeah, just try not to touch anything, okay? I shuffled my feet awkwardly. Okay, I'm going to bed. Bye. Bye! Alright, we're in chapter 3. So here was one of the major choices where you get the joke endings. That being to move the trap. We're not going to do that this time around. Okay, I guess we're not gonna go with the Anakin Skywalker thing this time. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna say it's not really that big of a deal. I was definitely upset. I definitely didn't like the situation, but it wasn't like she'd unintentionally or she'd intentionally ruined my potatoes. She'd only been so audacious as to dig them up without permission. 
long before they were ready. Even after I had specifically told her not to touch anything, I looked away. I'm just not a breakfast person. I'm really sorry. I just wanted to do something nice as a thank you for letting me stay here. I promise I'll fix everything and then I'll just get ready to leave. Sure. Whatever. I don't care. It's not my business. When we're done, I'm done. I turned away and went to haul on my work gloves and boots. I'll be out in the yard for a while. Okay. So now, let me see here. We're gonna go ahead and overwrite save slot 2 for this. And, yeah, from here on out. Although, well, I guess I could have. Ah, oh, well, it doesn't matter now. So we're not gonna leave it, we're gonna move it. I decided to move the trap and set it up further away from the house, closer to the woods. Huh. Maybe next time I'll catch something less likely to ruin my day. Maybe. Who knows? I really have no idea, but apparently if you don't move the trap, you're gonna screw yourself over in many ways you can't possibly imagine. Okay, that was a bit harsh. She didn't mean to ruin my day. Yeah, and you say that now, but she's going to make your life a whole lot better, trust me. A rabbit would be good, though. Tiny rabbits. I ignored the sudden craving for rabbit stew, and having finished with the trap, wandered down into the garden. Right away I could see where Mallory had dug up breakfast. I surveyed the overturned earth with a heavy heart, noticing a handful of small potatoes uprooted and abandoned. Well, I could always plant something new here. It was the right time of year for garlic. Wario loves garlic. He eats cloves of it night and day. Let's see here. Okay, so last time I asked, or I said, haven't you had enough confrontation for one day? Okay, we're just gonna go and ask her what she's up to. <clears throat> Let's see, I cleared my throat loudly and Mallory looked up, looked at me. What are you doing with those clothes? What are you doing? Oh, I was just going to go through them and sort out what's good to wear. I hope that's okay. Yeah, because as you can see, she's still pretty much very much in a towel, and... Well, I skipped over that a little bit, but... Obviously, he walked in on her when she was in the bath again. Huh, that didn't sound too worrisome. Maybe she was finally getting ready to go. Right. You're welcome to take anything that doesn't fit me anymore. I'm sure you could use some warmer things to wear out there on your travels. I turned quickly back to my computer, hoping I hadn't hurt her feelings with my not-so-subtle reminder that I didn't want her there. Or that I didn't want her here. Why do you care about her feelings? asked my brain. You already told her she's not welcome. She'll be gone soon either way. I hyper-focused on my screen, and in another couple of hours, I had... I still had nothing done. Suddenly it was dark out, and I was starving. And Mallory still hadn't left. In fact, she was in the kitchen. And there were nice, savory smells wafting my way. Okay, last time we had her stay off her feet. Now we're going to ask her to join in the garden. I suppose you could join me if you'd like. Some fresh air might help you feel rejuvenated, speed up your healing. I could show you a little bit about my setup too. Introduce you to the hands. She startled, or yeah, she startled as though I had woken her up from a daydream. Her eyes, bright and beautiful, locked onto mine. Wow, was all I could think. Wow, her eyes are so bright and beautiful and big. You have hens? Like little chickens that actually run around going cluck cluck? For real? Yes, yeah, just like in a Harvest Moon game. 
I laughed. It hadn't occurred to me that she might not have ever seen one before. But if she came from the city, which I sort of assumed she did, then it made sense. Her childlike excitement over something so normal to me warmed my heart against its will. How does that happen? Yeah, I have fish too. You want to meet them? Yeah, just like in Mr. Rogers. She raised excited fists, practically bouncing in her seat. Yes, I do. I really do. Okay, let's head outside then. She jumped up, the very definition of bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Her enthusiasm was infectious. It made me feel more lively too. I thought about insisting we both mask up if we were going to be spending the day in close proximity. But I thought about it some more, and since we'd be outside with a lot of space all around, and since neither of us had any symptoms, I imagined it would be fine. Okay... Uh, let's see, we avoided... No, wait. We answered honestly before. Let's just... Yeah, let's just change the subject, I guess. Well, short, because, um, chickens aren't very tall. <laughs> Her face is so confused. You know what is tall, though? Aliens, I bet. So what are your thoughts on the possibility of intelligent extraterrestrial life, anyway? Smooth. That was a very not awkward segue into another topic at all. You know, I thought I saw a UFO once, but it turned out it was just one of those wacky inflatable flailing arm things that got loose from a car a lot. <laughs> one of those sort of like, we're two people thing are like, ooh, ooh, like, you know, like that. <laughs> well, God, well at least I try, well, he tried. He failed terribly, but he tried, unlike how I felt awful making him answer her honestly about it all. Although now she probably has a feeling like, there's something you're not telling me. I saw the look of dismay in Mallory's face and let my voice trail off. Yeah, cause you're just, you're just randomly talking about aliens and UFOs and like, she probably thinks you're a nut job. She stroked one of the baby chicks, deep in thought. I guess life is always too short, no matter who or what you are. Well, it seems as though she kind of caught on to the ruse. Yeah, I guess it is. So no matter what, it almost seems like the outcome is the same. Mallory leaned down to nuzzle the chick again, whispering, I love you, little chick. Have a really fun day, okay? She giggled softly. Then she got to her feet and turned to face me. Thank you for bringing me to meet them. Of course. Anytime. I cleared my throat and motioned for Mallory to lead the way back out of the coop. I followed her out, shutting the gate behind us. Okay, according to my guide, we're going to have some major moments here. So, okay, I'm going to overwrite that, and then, okay, let me just see here, so slot three is where we have all the chapter five stuff. Yeah, because so far, yeah, going outside and moving the trap is going to be the commonality for the rest of these endings. Where everything changes is going to be with Chapter 5 and then Chapter 8. At least a very different version of Chapter 8 that I didn't get to show off before. Uh, 
Okay, and well, this is also something that apparently could make a world of difference here. Now, most of the... Well, most of the guy didn't really mention too much about, like, reading the spam or not. However, though, the spam does become important in Chapter 8. You can probably guess why. So you might even say that I made the wrong decision there. Anyway, but... Okay, well... We're just gonna read the spam anyway. And then, let's see here... Better avoid the subject. Okay, well, we're gonna try being flirty right back to her. Taking your sweater off won't change anything. What? I gave an exaggerated wink. She blinked at me, and I immediately wished the ground would open up and swallow me whole. Oh, Lord! Please swallow me into the earth, for I have made a grave mistake! <laughs> okay, well... <laughs> like, good, I feel like less of an idiot now. It took her a moment to process the joke, but th when it clicked, she burst out laughing. Her laugh made me laugh, too. We were interrupted when Mallory's stomach decided to let out a high-pitched growl. She stopped laughing and clasped her hands over her stomach. I need food! Uh, sorry. My tummy must be hungry after all that work. Mine is too. And I think I felt a raindrop just now, which is probably our cue to head inside. Do you want to meet me in there? I'll pick some things to make us a strawberry salad. Alright. So, looking at my notes again, I think I'm going to save what the guy calls the worst ending for last, because, yeah, I think I should just try to build up to the worst ending. I don't know if I'll be able to take it or not. So, okay. Hmm. All right. So here is another major choice. And then... Okay, well then maybe I should just make slot 4 be the point that I branch out from. Just to make things a little bit easier. So... In this case, we are going to ask her for her hopes for the future. I didn't get to show this off before, so this is going to be totally new. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Hang on, that sounded like a job interview question. Let me try again. Yeah, that kind of did. Although, more reasonably, most job interviews ask you, where do you see yourself in 5 years? But that's not the point. What kind of life do you dream about having? What are your hopes for the future? Mallory smiled sadly. You mean, aside from hoping someone finds a way to cure this virus? Yeah, aside from that. Like, pretend we live in a perfect world where the Big V never happened, and... we were all able to continue living out our hopes, dreams, and ambitions without any restriction whatsoever. She thought for a moment, her gaze wandering. In any particular future, when everything seems so fragile all the time, anything could change at any moment. Yeah. I'm not sure what video I said it in, if it was in one of these series videos or something else, but... Like, yeah, one day my mother was still with us, and the next, she was gone. And that changed everything for me. So yes... Life in itself is a very fragile thing, and change is inevitable. But I guess, no matter my situation, I'd always want to help people. Like, I'd love to keep a giant garden, just so I could share all the fruits and veggies with my neighbors. Well, if you live with him, you kind of have that dream, well, partially fulfilled. 
Minus the neighbors part, because we don't have any neighbors. Also, I will learn how to knit socks, so I can make sure everyone's feet stay nice and warm, because cold toes are the worst. <laughs> and maybe... Maybe someday, I could have a family of my own. She blushed as she said that last part. I definitely didn't want her to feel embarrassed, so I quickly replied. Wow. In my fantasy, I get abducted by aliens and they teach me how to drive their spaceship. Wow, this guy has a real fascina fascination with aliens here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, geez, what else is on your mind? Yeah, I may have to rethink that. Yes, I think you do have to rethink a few things. You need to rethink your life. Okay, well, let's not go that far. For real, though, that's a nice dream. Very altruistic. Indeed it is. Mallory smiled and gave a slight shrug. Anyway, I should probably let you get back to work now. The last thing I wanted to do was go back to work. I gave her a little poke for suggesting it. This isn't Crush Crush. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm super ticklish. Well, in that case, I'm probably going to have a field day when I get to play against you in Crush Crush. Alright, let's see here. Yeah, everything else, according to my guide, we don't have to worry about any major decisions until chapter... Chapter 8. Alright. Ludicrous speed time! Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and read the spam again. So that way I can choose to either delete it or read it at the end of chapter 8, or whenever the hell you get that question. Alright, well I guess before I do that, let's see here. We can either give her some space, or help her off the roof. I chose to give her or give her space before. Let's help her off the roof. Let me help you down. I offered my hand. She grasped it firmly and shuffled towards the edge of the roof, turning around. Firmly grasp it in your hand. She lowered herself onto the ladder slowly, making her way down one careful step at a time. I waited for her to reach the ground before I climbed down after her. You're like my own personal guardian. I feel like you'd never let anything bad happen to me. Yeah, clearly you did not see the last video. <sighs> and considering I have to get all the worst ending, or er, well, the bad endings and then the worst ending first, uh, I feel like this is gonna bite me in the back later. I imagine, like, yes, he would be, but. It's the curse of being a Let's Player and a completionist. Trying to go for all the endings. Not if you could help it anyway. Okay, well thank you for adding that last part. It makes me feel less awful inside. Is at least being real for a moment, like yeah, I'd probably be the same way. Like if I could have if, if there was a way that I could help and whatever for anybody, I would. And I for sure wouldn't want to let anything bad happen if I could help and prevent it. Although, as I said, life can be very unpredictable and fragile. And destiny just has a way of, you know, throwing you a curveball, it seems. Of course. I care about your well-being. She smiled at me, and we carefully made our way back inside the house. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, there's still a little bit more here. Okay, so if you were playing the other version of the game, this is what would get the scene that I will unfortunately not be able to show for this playthrough. 
So I guess everything else from this point, well, everything here is going to be, well, I don't even know how this is going to play out, so let's just, let's just see it for ourselves. We're going to show her how we really feel. I'm not going to hold back anymore. Slowly, I leaned in and brushed my lips against hers. I wonder how much is going to change here. A moment later, she kissed me back. We look at each other again, and my arms tightened around her. I want you to stay with me too. Okay, well... So far... So far this is very, very tame. But... Yeah, like I said, according to what I've read... The scene that would have played in the other version would have been a lot more... You know. She shifted closer to me, resting her head on the pillow next to mine. She sniffled. She sniffled, giving me a soft smile as I stroked her hair. Thank you. For everything. You make me feel so safe. Your arms are my castle, your heart is my sky. They wipe away tears that I cry. I watched Mallory's eyes fall shut. Her breathing became deep and slow. And though she'd fallen asleep, that little smile never faded. I kept stroking her hair. It felt so soft between my fingers. I was hypnotized. How had I lived all alone for so long? Had I not known what I was missing? Or how had I not known what I was missing? As the storm gradually retreated and the night grew darker and quieter, I struggled to keep my eyes open. Maybe I was a little afraid that if I let myself fall asleep, I'd wake up to find this was all a dream, but eventually I fell asleep anyway. Alright, well, here we go. Chapter 7, I believe. Yeah. So now that we had all that happen, I wonder how much is going to change, if anything. I would imagine, I mean, considering these two pretty much more or less just, I don't know, confess their love for one another. Well, indirectly, maybe. Yeah, I would think a lot would change, but I have no clue. Okay, apparently nothing at all changed. Okay, here we are, moment of, well, the other moment of truth time. Alright. So for this ending, I'm going to read the spam. Because after all, you never know, right? I opened the email anyway, thinking maybe I could find whoever started the vile forwarding chain and send them a piece of my mind. But then, in my but then my curiosity was piqued. The body of the email had sur a surprisingly official-looking Global Health Authority logo at its top. There were multiple language options. I scrolled to the appropriate section and started to read. Public notice. The worldwide distribution of R Pandavax is underway. Please read on for information on how and where to seek treatment. Okay, apparently... Sad Pandas made the... Okay, no. Well, obviously, this is a reference to them. But, yep, so... What a twist. This is the real deal. And I got an achievement for that. Patients who receive our Pandavax have a 96% chance of recovering. Up from the 45% seen with traditional medical intervention. Well, that's definitely a huge step forward. Right. I wish. Well... Our Pandavax rollouts are now taking place with med tents being set up outside major hospital locations in the countries and cities listed below. Symptomatic individuals should visit their nearest med tent as soon as possible for assessment and hospital admission. Hang on. 
This couldn't be real, could it? I scanned down the list and then I saw it. The name of our city. Is this actually real? Apparently so. According to my guide, it is. Our Pandavax treatment will be administered free of charge with identification requirements relaxed by emergency order. Our Pandavax may also have a preventative effect, and individuals who have not been infected may opt to receive an immunizing dose. I scrolled up, down, searching the screen for some evidence that this was fake, a scam, a lie, lies and deception. I pulled up the internet and searched our Pandavax. At least a hundred articles came up, all posted within the last 24 hours. Bulletins from different news sources, statements from researchers, schedules being shared. Mallory! She's gone. You need to go after her. I called up towards the loft, my shaking like my voice shaking like crazy, my gaze not leaving the screen. I stood up, tremors running through my whole body. Mallory, it's real! Mallory, we have to go now! Well, he's going to be in for a rude awakening. I was dashing up the stairs, staggering toward the bed, ready to pick her up and carry her out of the cabin if I had to. I couldn't believe this. I couldn't believe our luck. It felt like a dream. Could it really be real? I reached across the bed for her and... She wasn't there. Mallory? I looked around the dark room wildly. Mallory! The cabin remained silent. My heart pounded. Where was she? I raced back down the stairs, calling out again and again as I searched the cabin, throwing open the door to the aquaponics room and the bathroom and the storage room, frantic. Where was she? That's when I noticed something resting on the kitchen table, a small notebook left open. I went over and picked it up. The top page had a note written in purple ink. A lump formed my throat and my stomach twisted. We both know I have it. My only hope is that it's not too late. That I haven't passed it to you. Because I want you to carry on with your life. Don't worry about me. I'm going back home to find out what happened to my sister. Whatever the answer is, I'm comforted to know we'll see each other again soon. I hope you know I would have stayed with you forever. But I'm thankful we had the time that we did. Love, Mallory. So the note is pretty much exactly as it was before. I start the letter. No, I had only just been laying in bed next to her. I had only just found out that I might actually be able to help her. And now she was gone? I crumpled the paper in my hand, forming a tight fist. In that moment, I was ready to punch a hole through my wall. My heart was racing. I couldn't think straight. Damn it! I had to go after her. She couldn't have made it far. Not with her leg, and how sick she was. I was determined to find her, convince her to come back, convince her that we should be together, whatever the circumstances. She needed to know how I felt about her, how much she meant to me. Well, because I'm not going to question the logic right now, but... I mean, considering you all kissed, and... In another timeline, you could have done something a lot more. I think it should be clear how you two feel for each other. I raced to get dressed, throwing on a sweater and the first pair of pants I found, shoving my feet into some shoes and grabbing the crank-powered flashlight off the side table. There wasn't time to think. I just had to move. I burst through the front door and out onto the porch, nearly tripping down the steps before racing across the muddy lawn, my feet splashing in puddles. I was panting, sprinting almost blindly through the dark in whatever direction I thought Mallory might have gone. I was through the garden over the hill and near the woods when... Oh shit. Well then. 
god. Just our luck. Insult and injury. Yes, I think that would be a good a good title or a good name for that accomplishment or that achievement. We're literally injured after this very devastating bit of news here. Suddenly I slammed against the ground. Pain shot through me. It took a moment to get my bearings and understand what had happened. The trap. The trap that I moved, because in another timeline it led to some joke bad endings. And now it's come to bite us in the foot. Literally. How the hell? But no, I'd completely forgotten about moving it. How did I let this happen? You said so yourself, you're not thinking straight. Right now, you're just hell-bent on trying to go find Mallory and bring her back, not really thinking like, oh yeah, I left a trap here. You know? I sat against the ground, gritting my teeth. I couldn't let this slow me down. I gathered the strength to push myself up and looked back at my foot. It was my foot that had been caught, and at a straight angle. I could only assume it was because of the way I'd been running so fast, practically flying over the sloped ground. Yes, yeah, I don't even wanna. Oh. I twisted and reached to release the trap, which took a few tries. Finally, I was able to scramble away and stand up, but the pain in my foot was excruciating. No time to deal with that now. I continued down the path, limping heavily and bleeding into my shoe, calling Mallory's name. As I made my way, I shoved my hand to my sweater pocket and pulled out the flashlight. The same one that had led me to Mallory the f that first night. I immediately started cranking it, hoping against hope that it would lead me to her again. But as I entered the trees, I stopped, hesitating. Mallory's note said she was heading back to the city to check on her sister. Most likely she had taken the footpath through the woods, the path she would taken to get here in the first place. I may be able to catch her if I followed but it depended on how much of a head start she had. If I followed the old driveway instead, I'd eventually make it to the highway. It was a longer path, but a more straightforward one. And if I could flag down a car and get a ride, then I might even be able to reach the city before Mallory did. I had to pick quickly. All right, let me see here. Some of these endings, they have you go through the forest specifically but in this case I guess I'm gonna go to the highway both options seem so risky but I took my chances and started down the driveway toward the main road already I could barely walk on my injured foot my shoe felt tight and wet and every pains and every step sent pain shooting through my soul the light from the flashlight bobbed ahead of me, lighting up potholes and stones for me to step around and over. Okay, looks like he made it to the highway. It took longer than it should have, but soon I was at the turn where the driveway met the main road, and the high mass lights towering over me. The road itself was desolate, of course, few people traveled anymore. Still, as I staggered along the shoulder in the, in the direction of the city, I kept on cranking my flashlight, swinging it back and forth, and the off chance that someone, anyone, might come along and see me. The thought of Mallory kept me going. I walked for a long, long time. It felt like a ghost world. Please, is anyone out there? My voice held more despair than I'd even realized I was feeling. But then, as if my desperate voice had summoned it, a car appeared in the distance. I heard it before I saw it, and then I started waving my arms again. You're supposed to stay away from people, my brain reminded me. Shut up! That's not important right now! Okay, hopefully it's not going to be the little old lady from Pasadena. 
the car was getting closer, its headlights glaring. I tried to jump, but my foot hurt too much. Stop! Please! Stop! I need help! The car began to slow. I stumbled towards it. The window rolled down and the driver peered out. Saw my bloodied foot and gasped. Oh my god, what happened to you? Okay, it's not the little old lady from Pasadena. I'm trying to get to the city. Please, I'm hurt, and she's... I couldn't even say it. How could I explain? Get in. I'll take you to the hospital. Okay, thank you, Midwestern lady. I wanted to cry. I hobbled to the drive or to the passenger door and climbed in. Man, this this spooky ass music again. By car, the city rose up around us within minutes. As we drive through the dim pre-dawn streets, I looked out at the place I hoped I'd I'd hoped n never to return to. It looked so much more decrepit than I had imagined. The buildings were totally overgrown. There were broken windows and crumbling bricks, and the roads were all cracked apart. Yeah, look at all that. Temporarily closed. If by temporarily you mean eternally, then yes! Wait, is this the planetarium? It looks like it says galaxy there, I don't know. Here and there, bits of keep your distance taped, fluttered, forgotten. The people who did were not left, or er, the people who were left did not need to be reminded. There was a lot of vandalism too. We drove past one dusty looking grocery stores, which had three people lined up outside, each of them wearing heavy duty masks each of them wearing a heavy-duty mask and spaced at least eight feet apart from one another. Okay, well that's a little bit more than the usual six. I could imagine how tough it must have been on Mallory and her family living here, trying to stay safe and survive in a run-down dump like this. Oh, there's the tent. Let's see here. Okay, the guy did have me write down this phone number. Wait a minute, hold on. Let's see, did I... Yes, I did write down that phone number. That's going to be important later. The hospital came into view pretty quickly. I thanked the driver profusely for the ride, hopped out of the car almost before it had even fully stopped. Hopping out of the car. When I saw the med tent erected in the street outside the hospital, I almost couldn't believe my eyes. It existed, just like the email Bolton said it would, but there was hardly anyone around. A medical worker decked out in PPE emerged from the tent, holding a clipboard, a clipboard and looking around. A man with a small child called out from several feet away, and the worker began asking questions I couldn't hear. This was how they were saving the world, quietly and with eerie calm. Daring to hope, I looked around for Mallory. If by some miracle she had made her way here, then maybe everything would actually be okay. I spotted another small group lingering nearby, and I lurched towards them. I'm looking for a girl. Her name is Mallory. Her hair is long and white. She's wearing purple. I moved from person to person, pleading, but no one had an answer for me. All of a sudden, I heard a faint squeal of a megaphone, a voice crack cracking over the near-empty street. The medical worker was showing the man and child into the med tent now. I staggered over. Do you see a very sick girl dressed in purple? 
The medic looked at me, startled. I'm sorry, no. Who is she? Okay, it looks like we have another sprite here. And have you been in close contact with this person? Why, yes, you might even say we kind of shared a special moment with each other. If she's not here, can you help me find her? Because she's really sick, and I need to find her and bring her here. If you've been in contact with an infected individual, then the most important thing right now is for you to get assessed and admitted for treatment. You do understand how rapidly the virus proliferates. The sooner we can begin treatment, the better your chances will be. Please, follow me. But no, I have to... Please. Right now, you are potentially shedding the virus in a public space. You need to enter the med tent. I looked around at the near empty street. I wanted to keep arguing, but what could I say? The medic must have seen the pain and hopelessness on my face. I will try to find out about your friend. Now please. I need you to enter the med tent. <laughs> okay. Let me see here. Mm, I guess... I probably shouldn't even bother making too many saves now. So for this one, we're basically going to refuse treatment and insist on getting help for Mallory first. I can't stop until I find her. Please, there's no one here, but she's somewhere. And if I can just find her and get her back here in time, that's a life saved. The medic looked kind of lost. I was already backing away getting ready to start running again. Although, with your foot, I don't imagine you'll be able to run very far and fast. I couldn't afford to waste time arguing. Mallory might not be here, but I had a hell of a lot of city left to search. Wait! Don't go yet. The medic disappeared inside the tent. A couple of people who had been waiting nearby moved closer, hovering. It was probably wrong of me to race ahead of them, demanding the lone medic's attention, but honestly, whatever. It wasn't as though there were crowds and crowds of people waiting for aid. The only thing I cared about was Mallory. The medic re-emerged, holding out a bulky headset. Take this. It's a satellite phone. We have a few of them for contacting other med centers. And it is apparently by a sad panda electronics company as soon as you find your friend call us if we know where you are we might be able to send help a wave of gratitude washed over me as I took the sat phone I definitely didn't have to be told twice time had never been more of the essence thank you thank you I was already hurrying away almost in disbelief with this blessing I carried on down the street, calling Mallory's name. Though everything seemed so deserted, there were a handful of people around who would turn to look at me, puzzled. They avoided my path, and I avoided theirs. And though I was de determined to keep searching, any sense of hope I had was draining fast. It had taken me such a long time to get here. Mallory could be anywhere by now. Anything could have happened. I'm looking for a girl. Please, have you seen a girl wearing purple? Her name is Mallory. Do you know where I can find her? Someone must have seen her, but no one would tell me. No one would say. I searched for a long, long time. It was a slog. My head spun, and after a while, I couldn't feel either of my feet anymore. Then, I saw the small crowd of people on the street ahead, the people wearing gloves and masks, some of them sitting, crying, some of them standing together and shaking their heads. There was a van with silent lights parked nearby, not an ambulance, but a dark, non-emergency vehicle, the kind that came to collect people once they'd passed. The last time I'd seen a van like that was when my parents died. I wandered towards this, the nearest group of people, 
stopping a little ways away from them. What happened? The small group exchanged a glance. One of them answered in a somber tone. Someone jumped off the planetarium building. Oh my... <sighs> it's like a Morfati all over again. <sighs> Fucking damn it. Oh no. Yeah, I think we all know who that might have been. Yeah, it happened a couple of hours ago. Just after the sun came up. She was just laying there in the street. I'm glad they were finally able to send someone to take the body away. There was a strange, horrible singing feeling in my gut. A raven was cawing loudly somewhere nearby. It was a girl? Yeah, just a young woman. A teenager, maybe. So freaking sad. It couldn't have been Mallory, could it? Well, at this point, I think we're all in denial. But... Before I knew it, I was limping across the road, trying to see something, anything. I saw blood on the ground. I saw city personnel lifting something up, wrapped in a tarp, lifting it up into the back of the van. I saw a mud-stained purple shoe forgotten in the gutter. The whole world came crashing down around me. Because somehow, I found her. Only, I was too late. I returned to the cabin alone. This whole scene looked wrong somehow. The land and the trees and the cabin itself all looked dried out and colorless. There was nothing welcoming about this place, nothing that felt warm or safe. Neither the front porch, near the front porch I found a package which looked like it had been left outdoors a little too long and my heart sank. It must be that order I placed for drone delivery. I meant to pick up the package and sat right there on the porch to open it. And there was the first aid kit, nicely stocked. The fresh bottle of aspirin, shiny and sealed. And there was the ring I'd bought for Mallory. The one with the dainty purple stone that reminded me so much of her. I stared at it for a little while. I started talking to myself. I wish you'd never met her. Yes. That's a lie. Of course it is. But I wish I'd made different choices. I wish... I wish I hadn't lost her. Yeah. A cold, brisk wind rushed past, pulling the last few crisps brown leaves off the trees, sending them skittering. One thwacked me in the face before flying off into the garden. Thanks, wind. I stood up. I'd put the ring on some twine or something and wear it around my neck. And then... what? And then nothing. Uh, maybe I'll get struck by lightning. At least that would be something to look forward to. Meeting Mallory again in whatever afterlife there was. Maybe we could be ghosts together, haunt the cabin and scare off any trespassers by flapping our sheets and rattling our chains. As I turned and reached for the door, something purple seemed to flash in the corner of my eye. For the briefest moment, I thought it was Mallory, but of course there was nothing there. Someday, someday, I thought to myself, hurt, heading inside. I shut the cabin door behind me and went to put on the kettle. Okay, well that was one bad ending. 
So we can just check that off. Okay. So let's see, this next one... This next one doesn't really seem to have too much difference other than to accept the the treatment. Well, I guess I now regret not doing that. Okay, well, I'll be right back. Alright, so we're back here. And, yeah, so this next ending, I pretty much made all the same choices from Chapter 5 onward. Only this time... We are just going to go ahead and accept the treatment, and apparently we're not gonna search for Mallory from this point on. I don't know. Okay. And yeah, this is called Instant Regret. I don't know why it's called that, but I suppose we are going to find out. After that, everything became a blur. Inside the tent, I was brought inside or inside the tent, I was brought to a makeshift bed. The bed was surrounded by heavy plastic curtains that distorted everything around me. The machines, the hazmat suits, the flapping canvas walls, the noisy buzz of a generator that was like a jackhammer in my ears. A spiral of guilt and confusion consumed me. Was I sick? No. All of the horrible feelings in my body were because I'd been running so hard through the night, weren't they? Or had I felt the inkling of them before? Someone checked my temperature, asked me questions, took, bl took my blood. Before I knew it, I was being wheeled from the tent to the hospital building itself for quarantine. Don't worry, we're going to take care of you. Everything's going to be alright. Whose voice is that? I'm j Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just here like... I've heard this person's voice before, in Crush Crush, I think. Well, who knows, I'll... Yeah, I'd have to look at the credits for both games just to see, eventually. Maybe they'll be nice enough to put who voiced who, I don't know. Or maybe I'll at least recognize some names and be like, okay, maybe it was them. I didn't know who was talking to me because I couldn't see anyone's faces. All I knew was I definitely er all I knew was I didn't really believe them. After being admitted to the hospital, receiving preventative treatment, and being monitored closely for symptoms, I was finally allowed to leave. A week had passed, and by that time there was no way for me to know what had happened to Mallory. Well, if it was anything like the last ending. I searched for her, of course, but it wasn't like the old days when you could file a missing persons report, or when someone would find a way to contact you about a loved one's passing. I returned to the cabin alone. The whole scene looked wrong somehow. Okay, well, it was the same ending here. Okay. So that's another ending down. Okay, now then. Let's see here. So this one, we have to go to the through the trees and then to the hospital or highway, basically. It seems like it's gonna be similar to the last ending, but I don't know quite yet. Both options seem so risky. Okay. Well, let's see here. Let's keep searching the city. I doubt that's gonna do much of anything here. My heart told me to just keep looking for her, so I did. I mean, I'm also trying to show off all the options, so... I carried down the street, calling Mallory's name, 
Though everything seemed so deserted, there were a handful of people who would turn to look at me puzzled. They avoided my path and I avoided theirs. Okay, I would imagine this would have been the same as the Head Over Heels ending. Even though I didn't read it, obviously, but... Okay, so we're gonna cut through the trees again. Bring it all straight to the hospital. And then we'll pick up from there. The hospital had to be my best bet. Either she'd be there already, or I'd find someone there who would, or who could help me look for her. After getting my bearings and figuring out which way the hospital was, I started towards it, taking the shortest path through the streets I knew. When I saw the med tent erected in the street outside the hospital, I almost couldn't believe my eyes. It existed, just like the email bulletin said it would, but there was hardly anyone around. <laughs> Alright. So we're gonna insist on getting help from Mallory first. I can't stop until I find her. Oh shit, I actually... Okay, well... I had to choose favorite memory. My mistake. Well... At least now we know what happens if we do that. Okay, so for this next one, we have to ask her for her favorite memory. And then... Okay, from here, and then from here, we can get two more endings. Okay, so like I mentioned, two different endings we can get from this point on. We're still gonna go through the forest. Okay, now I see. So if you don't get the favorite memory with her, you don't ever learn about the planetarium. Alright, well... Let's see here... So, right... We're gonna go for the planetarium, then. We're kind of gonna go in order of my notes. I didn't think Mallory would let anything get in the way of her going home. She was determined to find out what had happened to her sister. So that was where my search had to take me. I reached back into my memory, trying to get my bearings and figure out which way to go. The planetarium was closer to the river, I knew that. I started down the street in that direction. My head was spinning, and I couldn't feel my foot anymore. But I kept on going, leaving bloody shoe prints behind me. Hope was the only thing keeping me going. I treaded over the rubble in the streets, passing broken hazard signs and empty storefronts, unable to stop myself from imagining the riots that must have taken place here years ago. When the top of the old planetarium building came into view, I sprinted the rest of the way. I looked at the building surrounding that one. Which was the apartment building where Mallory lived? I scanned all the windows and balcony in sight, looking for some sign of her. I turned in a circle, searching every street corner and bus stop I could see. It was like a ghost town. I tipped my head back to call out for Mallory. Oh, great. It seems as though we might have actually... Well, I guess we're gonna see what happens now. That's when I caught sight of a purple figure on the rooftop overhead. Mallory! Mallory! Don't move! I'm coming! I didn't even know if she could hear me. I just hurried as fast as my body would let me. Around the building to the fire escape. A dry, rattling feeling was building up in my chest. I could hardly breathe. 
I reached the top of the fire escape and hauled myself up onto the roof where I was sure I had seen Mallory. I looked around for her, and for a moment my body ceased all functions, and I could actually feel my heart skip a beat. Where was she? Mallory. A cold breeze blew past, and all I could do was stand there for a few moments, processing everything that was happening. Oh my god. I turned to find the source of that small, weak voice. Well, it seems though we stopped her, possibly. There she was, at the opposite edge of the rooftop, her delicate frame backlit by the gently rising sun. Dark hollows hung under her eyes and in her cheeks. She trembled, barely able to hold herself upright. Why are you here? Because I came here to find you. She didn't look at me as she spoke, and my throat felt like it was twisting shut. Your letter. I found it, and I... I couldn't just let you go. She listened and continued to gaze out at the cityscape, avoiding eye contact with me. You shouldn't be here. It's dangerous for you to be close to me. She was so out of breath. I approached her slowly, terrified that she would just float away. That doesn't matter to me now. I care about you too much. I... I love you, Mallory. She turned her face, finally giving me a weak smile. You dummy! I love you too! That's why I had to leave! She swayed, then, as though turning to look at me had made her dizzy, and her body dipped towards the ledge. Oh my- No! Damn it, this is like a Morfati, for real, all over again. I lunged, panic, and grabbed Mallory's narrow arms. In one swift movement, I had pulled her onto myself, redirecting the shift in weight to have her fall into my arms. Gently, I helped her lay down. Her cheeks were blood red, her skin like fire. She struggled to keep her eyes open. Okay, well, at least we really did stop her. <sighs> yeah, for anyone who doesn't know what I'm referencing, Doki Doki Amor Fati was a DDLC mod. And my OTP couple in that game, Mallory and the main character, or pff, Mallory and the main character. No, that's my, M my OTP for this game. No. Sayori and the main character in that game. There was an ending where... Well, I guess this is going to be spoilers for that game, although I don't know. If anyone watching Cabin Fever, I don't know if anyone's interested in DDLC mods, but... Okay, fine, I'm just going to spoil it, so... Sayori ends up throwing herself off the school building ledge and the MC tries to go after her, and they both end up dying together. And just when it seemed like things were kind of looking up, she wasn't feeling so depressed, and he was trying to be there for her more, to save her. In the end, it didn't even matter, and... The scene before that ending just really broke me as well just because it reminded me of how much I missed my best friend, and how much she meant to me, so... So you might say that... Yeah, Mort Fati definitely left a bit of a legacy with me. But anyway, well... As long as we don't have something like that again in this story... I don't... Have much time left. 
maybe you're just a dream. No, Valerie, you don't understand. Ironically, as much as I kind of made fun of that Celine Dion song, it almost seems like it would be kind of perfect for this moment. Although, given the seriousness of the video, I probably won't have... I don't think I'll just... In I don't think I'm going to insert that song in this video, though. There's a treatment! There's a treatment, and it's right here in the city, and I love you! Don't you see? I could have saved you! Why did you have to run away from me? She managed to look up at me, her eyes sparkling more than ever. There's a cure? I nodded vigorously. My sister wasn't home. D do you think maybe she managed to get the cure? Who knows? My shoulders rounded as I fought back tears. Of course, Mallory wouldn't even think of herself. Yeah, the whole point of her... Well, the other point of her leaving was because she wanted to be with her sister, no matter what, right? And you. You can get it, too. It was selfish of me to stay with you. I should have known. No. No, don't start that. She paused, sputtering and coughing weakly. Then she tried to smile, but tears washed across her eyes instead. Promise me. Promise me you'll take the cure. I don't want to die knowing I made you sick. Her eyes began to close, and I could tell she was starting to fade. No, Mallory! I don't want you to go! I'll, I'll carry you down to the hospital right now, or, or I'll, I'll yell until they find us up here! I shook her. You can't go! Please! I was alone for so long, I forgot what it was like to live! And then you came into my world, and... And you changed everything for him. And now he doesn't want to ever go back to that. <laughs> Tears are running down my cheeks too now. Tears began to roll down my cheeks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You don't need to have any regrets. Because having you in my life has been the best thing to ever happen to me. So don't you dare regret anything. Too weak to wipe away her tears, they fell onto the cold concrete blocks we were resting on. A chill breeze blew up the side of the building and carried with it the stale smell of pavement. Chickens, they need you. Promise me. Yes, I promise. I promise, Mallory. <laughs> Damn it. <sighs> A raven cawed loudly somewhere nearby. The wind died down, and suddenly everything was impossibly silent and still. Mallory's hand slid off my lap and fell onto the ground. Slowly I watched her eyes close one last time, and a quiet peace fell over us. All color had left her soft cheeks, and I felt her presence leave me. The sunrise shone a beam of light on us, almost as if it were if we were players in a tragic play caught under the spotlight. Softly I grazed my hand across her cheek to feel her warmth one last time before she turned cold. 
Why couldn't I have found her sooner? Why? It was a little while before I was able to return to the cabin. As much as I wanted to give up on myself, on everything else, I had made a promise to Mallory. So I went to the med tent, and I got assessed and admitted for preventative treatment with the Arpandavax. They kept a close watch over me for over a week before finally deeming me fit to go home. I went back to the cabin, which didn't feel... which didn't quite feel like home anymore. It was still the same beautiful landscape, but... I couldn't put my finger on what was different, so I just went about my business like normal. The chickens were fine. They'd ripped open their feed bag and had a feast in my absence, so they were fat and in good spirits. There was a fresh crop of weeds in the garden and on the grass, like Mallory and I had never cleared them out at all. Near the front porch, I found a package which looks like it had been left outdoors a little too long, and my heart sank. It must be that order I placed for drone delivery. With the first aid kit and the aspirin, and... I bent to pick up the package and sat right there on the porch to open it. There was the first aid kit, nicely stocked. The fresh bottle of aspirin, shiny and sealed. And there was the ring I'd bought from Mallory. The one with the dainty purple stone that reminded me so much of her. I stared at it for a while. I started talking to myself. What now? I don't know. I wish I'd made different choices. I wish I'd been able to save her. There really wasn't much more to it than that. I got up and went inside, taking the ring with me. I'd put a put it on a string and wear it around my neck, I decided. Then I'd make some tea. And then... I had to think about it for a minute. I decided I'd do something good, thanks to science, medicine, and basic compassion. There was hope for humanity again. I would be part of that. I would help the world. We could make things even better than they'd been before. I do my best for her. And that CG where the light literally left her eyes was just a bit too much for me. Okay, well that's the Your Heart Will Go On ending, or the Celine Dion Titanic ending. Okay, well, it seems like I can't actually show any of these properly. Well, hopefully they fix that. I don't remember if they had an update before. Hmm, hold on. It says that it actually doesn't really matter. The highway more or less takes you straight to the hospital anyway, but... Let's see here. Okay, so we're, now we're gonna go ahead and insist on finding Mallory. I can't stop until I find her. Oh God. Let me see here real fast. Why did it skip all that? Let's see. I'm going to get you help. I'm calling right now, and someone's gonna come. Okay, let's see here. And I'd vigorously fumbling for the uh, the sat phone I'd been, that I'd shoved in my pocket. The number or the phone was in my hands. My thumbs poised over the stiff tactile buttons. The number. It had been printed on the med tent, but. What was it? Okay, well... Let me see if I read this really fast... Okay, this is gonna be the difference between the best ending... 
end this ending here. So... I'm gonna hate doing this, but... So we can either choose the wrong phone number or the drawing a blank option. So I'm gonna have to see that again, more or less. I felt a cold dread. I didn't know the number. And yeah, you had one job. Way to make me feel worse. I looked down at Mallory's face, at the beautiful hope in her eyes. No! My brain thought dumbly. No, no, this can't... I can't... I can't let her know! I thought calmly in response. I pressed a random string of numbers and sat the sat phone up to my ear. We're here! We're just across the planetarium building! I found her, and she's okay! You'll be right here? Who are you talking to? Oh, get up. I tried my hardest to sound convincing, but my hand shook so hard I dropped the phone. I leaned over Mallory, holding her tight. Help is on the way! You're going to be alright! I don't know about that. We're going to be alright! We're going to spend a little time in the hospital, but then we can go home. Back to the cabin. Where we're going to live happily ever after. It was selfish of me to stay with you. I should have known. No. No, don't start that. <coughs> I'm so sorry. You have absolutely nothing to apologize for. I was alone for so long, I forgot what it was like to live. And then you came into my world, and... You don't need to have any regrets, because having you in my life has been the best thing to ever happen to me. So don't you dare regret anything. Let's just rest. You can close your eyes if you need to. We'll wait just like this until they get here. Except they're not gonna get here, are they? <sighs> Everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be... okay. So, so close to saving her, but I had failed. With a heavy sigh, I got on one knee and slipped my hands underneath Mallory's lifeless body. With ease, I managed to lift her up into my arms. She was always much lighter than I expected. I held her and looked over the city one last time. The sun continued to rise in the sky. And soon, I knew the residents would be waking up. Somewhere back at the cabin, I imagined my rooster was crowing. I apologized to him and the hens, knowing that I wouldn't be back in time to feed them. In that moment, nothing felt real anymore. Well, it did make me happy to hear that people would finally have a cure. This, and the sadness could end. I only felt bitter resentment myself. A raven was calling loudly somewhere nearby. Numbness set in, and even the sun's warmth had no power over me anymore. 
I couldn't feel anything, and I didn't want to anymore. I looked down at Mallory's delicate face and studied her perfect lips, pale cheeks, and wispy hair. She was all I wanted. So then we would be together. Apparently that's still not the worst ending. Alright, well... I think I am just gonna go ahead and save that for another video. So I will have the worst ending and then the best ending as one final video. After that, well... I guess we'll see. And unfortunately it seems like there's some kind of a glitch going on where you look at the gallery and it's... Well, it kind of displays a sprite of Mallory, like, stretched over everything. Kind of distorting everything. So, I... I don't know. Well, let me just check here. Yeah, so... We unfortunately cannot see some of this for ourselves right now, but... And so I would imagine... Okay, this is obviously, or at least I'm guessing this is the scenes that I cannot show. And this would have to be between the last two endings. Um, most likely also the last two endings. So, yeah. Like I was saying in the other video, whenever that was, if you don't have the DLC, then yeah, it appears as though you cannot get the full gallery, but oh well. What can you do? Although, yeah, at the very least, like, it would bother the heck out of me, because I'd be here, like, wondering, why can't I get those last pictures? I don't know what I messed up on. But, yeah, well, now you know. Anyway. Yep, so... I guess the next video will be the last. I don't know if I would think about maybe doing like what I would call a perfect playthrough where I just go through without any commentary just to show off the, at least how I would say the story would play out, you know, make all the right choices and then get the final ending just to kind of create that illusion. But yeah, I don't know. Not to mention I'm pretty sure there's already plenty of other YouTube channels out there that have done that. But anyway. So, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time with whatever else I do. Stay golden, and later, folks.